This is a long-term review of my pair of Nikon 10x42 modified binoculars. This is the first pair of Burry binoculars I've ever owned and I've had this for about a few years. You can tell that it's well used just by looking at how dirty it is, all the dirt on the corners. Also, the lens cover, they don't stay on much long. They kind of just pop off easily. But it's better than having no lens cover to protect the lens. Yeah, see, see, it still loosens up from time. Just in case some of you are new to this, the term birding is basically short for bird watching, which is an outdoor activity where you go out just to watch birds. Well, in my case, I also like observing other animals like butterflies, mammal different mammals and other species. If you're not aware what the term, what 10 by 42 stands for, 10x denotes the amount of magnification. So 10x means any object you see through these binoculars will look 10 times bigger. And the number 42 denotes the diameter of the objective lens, which is right here. So I got a ruler. It should measure exactly 42 millimeter, 42 millimeters. Yep, 42 millimeters. And this style of binoculars is called a roof prism. It is straight through. It's not like a portal prism, which is angled like this, the, the, and up. Roof prisms are a lot slender and they're sleeker and they're more popular with birders than pearl prisms. It doesn't really, roof prisms aren't exactly better than pearl prisms. It's just a personal pref, it's just a preference thing. And most birds prefer roof prism over pearl prisms. Here is the box that it comes with. Yeah. This is the box. You see it says Monarch. Back a bit. This is Nikon, the magnification and objective lens diameter. Yep, this is the box that comes in. Oops, sorry. Sorry. And this is the case that the, you put the binoculars in. Simple nylon case. Opens with a Velcro. This is a belt loop. Personally, I only use this case to store my binoculars when I'm not used. I don't use it to carry my binoculars in. Like I especially don't like wearing this in my belt. It's just too bulky and too big. <laughs> and having the and it's also very inconvenient to constantly have these, to constantly pull these out of the pouch just to see something and put it back in. Especially as you notice the next drive does get in the way. Yeah. And even if you do put away, it still hangs. You have to basically fadangle this into the case in order to store away properly. And that's why I prefer just to wear this around my neck as opposed to be just putting it in the case constantly. So let's get this out of the way. It's still, it's a decent case overall. Now to give you a quick dimensions, the Nikon Mark V is about it's about five and a half inches wide at the widest point which is these two rubbers you can also it is about six inches high and the depth is about two and a quarter inches by measure not not counting that rubber part here just right here about two and a quarter inches and it weighs around 21 ounces. So it's quite heavy if you're a small person or if you don't have that strong of a neck muscle, it could weigh, it could feel a bit heavy for your neck. For me, it does actually weigh me down all the time, especially when I go out hiking with these around my neck. If I were to hiking even for like half an hour or more, these, you do start to feel the weight of these pair of binoculars pulling you down. I would like to get myself the the kind of binocular strap that wraps around your shoulders instead. 
and, and this hand, because then the shoulders would be bearing the weight of the binocular stem and neck, which would have been better, but that's for future. This is the eye cup cover it comes in. It's easy to attach, just right here. It's got a nice, it's got a break gap right here. So all you do is just slip back on. When you want to put these away, if you want to start using this more, you simply just pop it off and it's out of the way. So you can constantly look up, keep using these without having to get these out of the way. Just like that. This is the next strap. It's quite comfortable. It's it's soft. It does insulate your neck though. So if you are hiking out on a hot day, it does build up sweat quite a bit easily. But you know, but it's still comfortable. This is the eye cup right here. The amount of eye relief this gives you is about 18.4 millimeters. The, the reason why eye relief is so important is because if you're a person who wears glasses or have limited vision, you want the amount of eye relief in order to be able to use these binoculars, which means you have to pull these in as much as you need as needed for your eyesight. If you're not an eyeglasses wearer like myself, who based on my last visit to the eye doctor, I don't need glasses, you would want to pull these all the way out. So you can still use these binoculars normally. But if you're an eyeglass wearer, you might want to take that into consideration if you want to decide if this pair of binoculars is, has the right amount of eye relief for you to be able to use 18.4 millimeters. This is the fo the focus wheel right here is very smooth. Like every time I use this binocular, I can adjust the focus wheel very easily without worrying about fidgeting or any, any or something that could distract me from viewing animals. All I do is just simply turn as I'm focusing on the target or the subject of matter. It also has another focus wheel right here. I've tried using it a couple of times. I've never really needed it. Plus, this one is a little bit hot, stickier, or not stickier, sorry, stiffer to turn than this. This is smooth. This is a little bit stiffer. So I only use this if I really need it. Like, the target I'm trying to focus, it's just not easy to focus. And the uh, bridge right here. At first, it is sticky, so I would actually adjust this to your to your to fit you first before you ever take it out there to go observe wildlife. Like have it adjusted to fit you perfectly, adjust all this, and then you basically just go out and you see wildlife. Just simply pick it up and watch right away without having to worry about readjusting, other than the focus right here. But this is not a problem because it's very smooth. The amount of field of view you get out of this pair of binoculars is about 5.5 degrees, which is roughly 289 feet out of a distance of 1,000 yards, which is pretty wide for a 10 by 42. Oh, fun fact, the, 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 the amount of magnification does affect the field of view. The lower magnification binoculars like the 8 mag time magnification or even 7 will have a wider field of view than a 10 time magnification because you're essentially zooming in more so the amount of field of view gets smaller whereas you magnify out just a bit it gets wider and the closest focus you'll get about this is 8 feet close to 8 feet which is actually not too bad considering what I do because again I'm observing wildlife and it's rare for me to see a bird get come closer to me than six eight feet like rare because most wildlife are skittish of people they're they don't like it close which is fine unless you're really trying to get really close to wildlife which I highly do not recommend then eight feet should be just fine for you fine mm -hmm. Now Nikon does offer other binoculars 
under the Monarch line. They have the Monarch 3, which is a bit more inexpensive than the Monarch 5. They also have the Monarch 7, which is a couple a little bit more expensive by a couple hundred dollars. And they have another edition of new they have a recent addition to the Monarch line, which is called the HG. It's a bit more high-end, it goes for around a thousand dollars, which of course by me is not a budget binoculars <laughs> pair of binoculars. But the reason why you see a different price tag is mostly because of the overall image quality each give you. The higher the price, the better the image quality in terms of brightness, clear, sharp image, mainly because of the glass. Also, I found I noticed that with the 7 and the HG, they also have a wider field of view than this pair of binoculars, with the HG being wider than both of them. It's, it's a case of you get what you pay for in a sense. What I really about, like about the Monarch 5 is that out of all the different Monarch binoculars, this here is, basically essentially gives you the best bang for your buck in terms of trying to introduce someone into birding. Like you're trying to get someone started birding, they've never been, went out birding their entire life, they want to get started but you need to find them a binocular game to start. You don't want to you're not war you're too worried about getting started with something too expensive, only find that they're not into it. And on the other hand, you want to them against they really want to get started, but you don't want to get started with something that's a bit on the cheap side that doesn't give as good of an image or or quality of an image as you want it to give. So the five is the best of both worlds. It's not too expensive like the seven of the HG. Three hundred thirty well, okay, maybe Three hundred dollars may sound a bit expensive, or three pound where you get it at, but for a pair of binoculars, especially if you're trying to go out birding, because you want to watch bird, see birds with them, it's actually not a bad of a price, because it, because with the three, you know I've seen the reviews, they are good too, but the five does give a bit of a brighter, a bit of a clearer image, and if. And if you really want to be able to uh, uh, to recognize different species of birds, a lot of birds have unique traits such as difference in coloration that could make the difference with observing, uh, recognizing what species you're looking at. And the five it is actually good enough for how much you pay for. You do get a brighter, clear image for the seven, and especially the HG, but at the same time. For five hundred plus, or even for thousand dollars, it's kind of a bit out. Of, it's kind of a bit of an investment to get someone started. So it's the best of both worlds. Not too, not too overly expensive, but it gives you a bright enough image to give you a clear detail of the, of whatever animal you're trying to spot. So I do I recommend this pair of binoculars. Yes, I actually do. Actually, it's a good pair, but. Not the 10 by 42 though. I would rather you get the 8 by recommend you get the 8 by 42 instead. And here's why. Remember I said earlier, the difference between different magnification is the field of view. If you before I got, when I first got these binoculars, I honestly had no experience with burning at all. Like I have no idea what I need to know and I have absolutely no experience with handling different binoculars so I had no clue on what to get all I knew is the trade-offs between different magnification more magnification versus more field of view I didn't think much about brightness or amount of light coming in through these binoculars I just simply had no experience so I decided to pick the 10 because I thought you know the main reason why most birders get 8x42 is because they also get spotting scopes. And the problem with me when I first got this was I was also a college student and I had basically very limited funds, money, and getting both a spotting scope and a pair of binoc good, decent binoc good binoculars is kind of out of the question. So I had to get one and that's the binoculars and I thought, you know what, if I can only get binoculars, I might as well get one with a little bit more get more mag little bit more magnification so I got that's how I ended up getting the 10 by 42 now I have to admit the 8 by 42 would have been better for me because there have been times where I needed that field of view in order to be able to look around an area be able to better see 
the larger area to see multiple targets because there are times where I had to focus one target to the other constantly shifting as opposed to being able to see both in one area. Though the higher magnification does help because I can see animals a little bit farther out more closely but then again that task could have been accomplished with a spotting scope as opposed to using a mag a binoculars for both. So if you were to ask me back then what would I what would I have gone? No, I'm sorry, I said that wrong. So if I were to have known all this now, back then, I would have gone the eight instead of by the ten by forty two. That's just how I that's just based on what I think is needed is what I need my needs are. But of course your needs may be different. Maybe more education is more important to you than more field of view. You would have to experiment yourself and find which one is the better sweet spot for you. In the sense, does a wider field of view matter to you more? Or more magnification matter to you more? Okay. Well, I hope you enjoyed this review. Thanks for watching.